How do you turn a classic car into a modern car? And how much does it cost? Welcome back ladies and gents. Today we are going through my full entire project. We're gonna be doing a cost breakdown as well as in how to get this job done. Kind of a two on one type deal as well as a little bit different video as you guys can obviously tell. But I wanna hop right into it. I wanna teach you guys how to do this resto mod project. Let's go ahead and start off with what is a resto mod. So as you guys already know, a resto mod is a classic car with a modern drive line you're just making it new getting rid of all of that old technology push rod motors modernizing it with brand new technology brand new motors more horsepower new transmission brakes to make it more of a better driving experience as well as a pretty cool project i've had a blast with this so far it's been about a year and i did the first startup not too long ago now when you do a project like this there's lots of challenges but it can be very very rewarding the cost of a project like this is going to vary tremendously depending on how much detail you want to do how nice you want to get everything how big of a motor how much horsepower you want to do what kind of brakes tires there's just so many components that is going to determine a cost of this I'm going to try my best to really generalize a good idea here for you as well as give you my personal experience on what I'm doing with my car so keep that in mind that this is not a fixed point because there's just so many parts that's going to adjust that pricing so let's go into this and start off with the actual car itself so you can do any car you possibly desire you could do an old Corvette Mustang Challenger Camaro anything you want in my instance I did a 1968 Mustang fastback with a 289 which I picked up for $35,000 that was my starting point picking up this car back before COVID spiked up all of those prices and now they are crazy but yes i did pick up the 68 fastback with thirty-five thousand dollars, and that was my starting point for this project now your starting point may be a little bit different it can start from zero dollars which a car you've already had or it could go up to literally hundreds of thousands of dollars if you plan on doing some specialty car hopefully it's around the twenty to forty thousand dollar range which is probably the most common that I've seen around here but honestly if this is your project you can spend however much you want I did $35,000 which is okay now the second thing you need is the motor which engine are you wanting to put into this car now that's gonna vary quite a bit because you could do an LS motor you can do a coyote you can do 2JZ you can do so many different motors into any car this is why it's so fun because you have the freedom to choose what you want to do and put into your car now keep in mind that not all engines is a plug-and-play type deal because you might have to make some customizations like I did to make it work but essentially you can put any motor into any car just some motors require a little bit more attention and work than others so just keep that in mind when you choose your, your engine. Now my motor, very specific, I'm not gonna go too much in detail, was about $10,000 and that's for a brand new Coyote 5.0 liter with forged internals, stage three cams, upgraded timing components, the full nine yards. That was about $10,000 mark. That was for me. Again, yours could be from a couple hundred dollars by going to the junkyard, picking yourself up a junkyard LS to spending literally $20,000 on a brand new BMW motor or Mercedes motor, whatever motor you can possibly purchase is basically what the price point is. But for me, it was $10,000 around that area. So in this project so far, we're at $45,000. Now the next thing to keep in mind is what kind of transmission are you gonna be running? Now I could have gone auto, it was originally an automatic, or I could switch it to a manual. I wanted to swap it to a manual, so I got myself a TKX transmission, brand new, rated up to 600 foot-pounds of torque, and it was a five-speed. So that cost me about $3,000, brand new from Tremec. That's what I equipped on my ride. This might be free of a transmission you've already had, or a couple hundred from a junkyard, or you could get something brand new for about three to $5,000 with your transmission. So, so far we're in about $48,000. Now with the manual transmission, you do need all of the components to make it work like a clutch flywheel you're gonna need the pedals as well as a hydraulic clutch assembly so that everything can work that was an additional twelve hundred dollars or so twelve to fifteen hundred dollars we'll say fifteen hundred for the benefit of the doubt 
but you do need more components to make that transmission work. Now this next option is very optional. It really depends on if you have the wiring to make the motor work. Now you may already have it where it's a plug and play type swap, definitely go for it. But for most motor swaps, you will need a wiring setup or a power pack, how Ford calls it. The Ford Performance Coyote Power Pack is what I needed to make my Coyote run in a car that normally doesn't come with a Coyote. That was $1,500. So the power packs usually go from $1,000 to $2,000 depending on the car but you do need the wiring to make the motor work. Now this next part is really optional because my motor doesn't naturally fit into a classic Mustang. Unfortunately, the Coyote motor is huge. The dual overhead cam just is too large for the smaller engine bay of the classic. So there was actually a kit out there that they made from Rod and Customs lots of other different companies make this kit where it involves cutting out the strut towers installing a brand new cross member with suspension brakes as well as the suspension and brakes for the rear end that all together for me was about seven thousand dollars that does include again the suspension the cross member you get the wheelwood disc brakes as well as the four link rear suspension and the nine inch rear end. So that was kind of a kit that did include everything. So if you take all of those components and just divide it by the 7,000 that I spent, that's pretty much how it goes. But yes, I did need to convert the classic so that the Coyote motor would fit as well as upgrade everything else to support the additional 300 horsepower we're gonna throw at it. So altogether, that kit was $7,000 that we paid so that the Coyote can at least fit in the car. All right, so we got the engine, we got the transmission, we got it in the car, and we have the supporting mods to make it work. Now we have to connect the transmission to the rear end of this car. So you do need a drive shaft. I got a one piece aluminum drive shaft from Precision Shaft Technologies. That was about $800. Again, it will vary depending on what material you wanna go with as well as what style. There are one piece to multiple pieces and there's the steel components, aluminum, or if you wanna go all out, there's the carbon fiber, which is gonna be the most expensive. But personally, I just got the one piece drive shaft, which you will need to connect to your rear end. Now the rear end, as well as the four link suspension and the brakes all came in with my kit at the $7,000, but it would be a good idea to upgrade those components if you swap out a motor that has more horsepower than normal. So getting the rear end upgraded at this time is always a good idea. I personally went with a nine inch rear end, 380 gears with four link suspension all around and 13 inch drilled and slotted Willwood disc brakes. So I went from a drum to a disc conversion and it will stop on a dime, especially with the engine being so much more powerful and the car is gonna be a lot faster. You will need those supporting mods to complete this project, at least the right way. Now let's look at the fuel links. This is a good time to upgrade your full entire fuel system like I did. I upgraded from the fuel tank all the way to the fuel injector. So I personally got a brand new tank. That was about $500, as well as I got a full entire return style fuel system from Aeromotive Fuel Company. That was about $2,000 for the Aeromotive kit as well as $500 for the fuel tank. So we are sitting about $2,500 just for that. And that does not include the injectors. Me personally, I am equipping a really large motor with lots of horsepower. So I needed to get 1000 CC injectors, which cost me $1,100. So all in all from the fuel system, when it comes to the fuel tank, all the way to the fuel injectors, we're at about $3,600 just to make sure we never run out of gas. Now, let me tell you, there's gonna be a lot of small and miscellaneous things. And that's honestly the things that delay the project the most from cooling lines to specific sensors to specific adapters to much more you can expect anywhere from not having anything at all which in your case awesome hallelujah for you to having quite a bit which for me it was about two thousand extra dollars for these small miscellaneous things that i had to get after not knowing what was needed to get this out on the road so expect anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand for those small itty bitty things that you do need to function correctly so this is also a good time to upgrade your wheels and tires me personally i'm keeping the same exact set that i had before i started the projects in my case it is zero dollars at cost but let's just say you wanted to upgrade your wheels 
and tires, you can expect a couple hundred to a couple thousand depending on which wheel tire setup you go with. Now with these projects, people like to paint their car after they're done. I'm personally not doing the painting yet. I will do later on, but for a paint job, you can expect anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000, even more depending on how detailed and how intricate and how perfect you want it, as well as the condition of the car before you take it in. So expect anywhere between 5,000 to around $20,000 depending on what you want to go with. And that's basically it. That is all we have up to this point that I personally have gone through as well as what you can do to get the car up and running. Again, there's so much more that you can do, but that's going to be the main thing to get the car back out on the road as well as drive it. So you can expect this project again, anywhere to be between 50,000 to $150,000, even more depending on how you want to go about this. That is my setup. That is my approximate cost up to this point. Videos to come very shortly with the Fastback app. Exciting news. We will be taking it out on the road very, very shortly. But that is a build breakdown as well as cost breakdown of what we have with this project so far. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was very fun building and I'm still having a blast building it. So it is a good project if you ever want to go ahead and tackle it yourself with a family member, with a friend, whatever it may be. But just to let you know, it's not going to be cheap but I promise you it will be fun. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.